Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Ella. Today I'm super excited to review this Winsor & Newton Cotman 5ml tube set. I actually posted a video of the unboxing of this set and also price comparisons for this set in a separate video. I'm going to link that below if you're interested in watching that. In this video, I'm going to be swatching all these paints. I'm going to be comparing the swatches to other student grade watercolor sets. I'm going to be painting a sample painting and comparing it to a sample painting of the Winsor & Newton pan set. So same watercolors, just different format. I have a pan set and a tube set of these watercolors. So I want to compare how those perform differently. And I'm super excited because I'm going to be painting the Rockefeller Owl, which is um, the cutest thing ever. I saw it on TV and I couldn't help myself to paint him. So stay tuned to see that painting. I'm going to also be putting in the description below timestamps for this video. So if you're interested in only the comparisons or only the sample painting or only the swatches or the conclusion, you can just skip ahead to those sections. So you can go to my description and click on those sections on the timestamps and it will take you there. So now I'm swatching out these colors. I actually swatched them out wet. So instead of letting the paint dry on my palette, I decided to swatch them wet for one reason. Because when I swatch my previous Winsor & Newton Cotman set, that's a pan set, I had a really hard time lifting the colors and re-wetting the paints. So I thought it would be just a lot easier to swatch these out wet. I also wanted to compare if they're more vibrant and I get, a, get better color payoff and better pigmentation by swatching these out wet versus having to re-wet them after being dry. So far, I mean, I'm very impressed with the vibrancy of these colors. I really like how they're laying down. They look really bright and cheery and just like beautiful. I did notice that the permanent rose in the palette looked a little dull. And I was actually kind of happy to see that when I swatched it out, it was a bit more vibrant than I expected. The burnt sienna here, it's not as deep as I would like. I have the same problem with my Cotman pan set. So that, I guess, in the tube set is about the same as the pan set. It's just a little weak, um, the burnt sienna and the Cotman set. But it fits the purpose and it works well. Given the price point, you can't really ask for more. Here I'm mixing two color wheels, one of cool colors and one of warm colors. I just want to see how these paints behave together, how they mix and blend. And I have to say, when I was done with these color wheels, I was really happy with the results. They really mix cleanly. They create really vibrant color when mixed together. So I was pretty happy with the results of these two color wheels and all my color mixing. This set didn't come with a warm yellow. It came with a lemon yellow and a cadmium orange. So I'm using the cadmium orange as my warm yellow, I guess, right? So basically in a primary palette, you would have two yellows, two reds, two blues, one warm and one cool of each. So this set brought a cool and a warm red and a cool and a warm blue, but it didn't bring a cool and a warm yellow. So the orange actually does the job. It's basically a warm yellow, really, if you uh, look at it, it's just called orange. So it makes really great orange color here with the cadmium red, like a deeper orange and a really cool deep green that I love with the ultramarine blue. The violet is also super deep, so I was super happy with the results. I did a wet on wet test here where I just put clear water and I dropped a few colors in there to see when it dries, how well it disperses. I also mix some neutrals. So I mixed ultramarine with burnt sienna, ultramarine, sorry, hooker's green with cadmium red, which is this one, and the dioxazine purple with the lemon yellow. So basically, I chose colors that are opposite to each other in the color wheel to see what kind of neutrals, grays, or browns I could get. 
So you can get a nice range of grays and browns with this set. I feel like the color selection is super balanced and you can really make all kinds of mixes with these colors, basically any color you need. I also mixed a few greens using the hookers green. I mixed it with dioxin purple, orange, burnt sienna, and yellow to get different types of greens from sap green to a mossy green to a more vibrant green. Here is the final dried swatch sheet. You can either pause or take a screenshot if you wanna kind of stare at it for a longer. I'm really happy with the results and love the wet on wet techniques, how that came out. Now I wanna compare this, these swatches to another Winsor & Newton Cotman set that I have, which is this Winsor & Newton 14 half pan set, which has a slightly different set of colors, but I've always found these hard to lift just to re-wet and get a good color payoff. So I'm wondering if, because these come in tubes, then that issue would be resolved with the tubes versus the pants. So I have the swatches for the tubes that I made here. These are the swatches that I had made a while ago for this pan set. Again, they have a slightly different color selection. So we don't have the same cadmium red on both sets. We don't have the same um, cool red in both sets. We have permanent rose in this one and alizarin in that one. We have a different purple. But we do have a few colors that are the same, which is the lemon yellow, the ultramarine blue, the cerulean blue, and the burnt sienna, which is this one and this one. Those four colors that are the same across both sets, I have to say, are quite comparable, very similar in vibrancy, very similar in opacity, and they behave about the same. Even though um, I felt that I had a hard time getting good payoff here, I felt that I got a same vibrancy and same uh, pigmentation with the tube set. So I would say the tube sets, if we look and compare apples to apples, the actual colors and pigments across both sets, I would say they're pretty comparable. That being said, as I mentioned in my unboxing video where I compared prices, of this set, the tube set versus other sets, I feel like the tube set is a better deal because you get more paint per ounce for the money. And since it's quite comparable to the half pan sets, you can either use it to refill your half pan sets or you can just um, buy it as is and buy a cheap palette like I did here. This is a palette from the dollar store and you'll get very similar results. Now I'm gonna compare these to other student grade watercolor sets. This is the Schminke Academy set. I actually have a separate video where I'm comparing this set to the Winsor & Newton pan set. I'm gonna link that above in case you wanna see it. I feel like the Schminke Academy has better dispersion than the Cotman tubes. They're more transparent and they behave more like professional watercolors, in my opinion. They're also easier to lift, and you'll see that in my other review. So I definitely, if you can get your hands on these, these are not sold widely in the United States, so they're sold more in Europe, but you can get them online. They're definitely more expensive than the Winsor & Newton Cotman, though. So if you're on a budget, these are a great um, alternative. Then the Van Gogh watercolor set. Van Gogh is one of the better liked, I guess, watercolors for beginners. They have great pigment information. They have great light fastness. They behave almost like professional watercolors. They disperse really well. I find that they're a little bit more opaque than the Winsor & Newton, but um, they are amazing watercolors. It's just different characteristics. It doesn't make them um, better or worse. It's um, depending on what you like, right? What you like to use them for. I They are also a, a lot more expensive, I feel. So you can get like a 10 tube set for $14 like I did with this one. So again, if you're in a budget, these are perfect um, alternative. These are a little pricier, but I feel like they perform more like professional grade watercolors. The Prima watercolors, this is... Um, a mix of the tropical set and the decadent pie set this company actually renamed their sets to art philosophy so you can find sets under both names online which is kind of confusing but they have great vibrant colors 
they behave like professional paints. My only issue with them is that it was really hard to find the pigment information and their light fastness is not that great many times. So it's a little iffy in terms of the, the pigments they use. And if you're if that's important to you, if pigments and night fastness is important, I would steer clear from this set. I feel like Winter Noon Common are a bit more reliable in that sense. But if you don't care about light fastness or pigment information because you're uh, starting out, then this is a great set. Um, I've said of these though, it's about $20 plus online. So they're a little bit pricier for 12 colors than uh, the tube set from Cotman. This is the Lucas Studio watercolor pan set. This is a German company. I feel like these colors, they're hard to lift, just like the pan sets from Winsor & Cotman. They're a bit more opaque and they just don't feel as, they don't behave as quite like the professional grade sets. I They give me a little bit of grief so they're not also much cheaper. They're about the same price, if not more, per ounce. And I mean, they're fine if this is what you have available in your area. They're, they're you know, great for beginners. I feel they're just a little weaker than the other student grade sets that are better known. Like, look at these, the color mixing for the, the cool colors. You know how this is much duller and paler. Same with the warmer colors so definitely i would say in terms of price this wins in terms of performance there are other better options but at a higher price i also wanted to compare this to the pretty excellent watercolors so i didn't swatch these in the same paper like these are all swatch in canson xl paper so this is not apples to apples but um i realized that i just don't have i never created a swatch like this for the pretty excellent watercolor set that i have i have to say in terms of vibrancy dispersion and just like pigment load the pretty excellent set blows them all away they're, it's just a, they're amazing paints for the price that being said they have a lot of light fastness issues so everything that has a red x is not light fast and there's a lot of them in the set that are not light fast Again, if you're journaling, sketch, and like painting in sketchbooks, and you're not gonna really hang up any of this artwork to to the sunlight, then it's fine. They have a great color selection, and they just like behave almost like professional paints, which is amazing. And they're twenty five dollars, give or take, on Amazon for like twenty four colors, so it's a great deal. But again, they're not light fast. Now I'm gonna put these paints to the test by actually painting something with them. I'm gonna paint the same painting with the Cotman tube sets and with the Cotman pan sets, just to compare them both to see how they perform. Even though I didn't have exactly the same colors for each, I tried to pick colors that are pretty similar. The subject of this painting is the Rockefeller Owl. If you're not familiar with the Rockefeller Owl, this little owl was found inside the Rockefeller Christmas tree this year. We're in the year 2020 when they put it up in Rockefeller Plaza and he became viral online and I thought he was the cutest, cutest little owl I've ever seen. So I was inspired to paint him with these paints um, just to do the test. I used 100% cotton paper to paint these two little owls. I feel like 100% cotton paper really uh, provides the paints with the best surface to show their performance and to really shine. So I'm using uh, Aquabee 100% cotton paper for both these paintings. For the swatches, I used Canson XL paper, which is a, a wood pulp paper, which is different than this paper. All right, I'm going to leave you with some music as I paint both owls, and I'll see you on the other side with my conclusions.
All right, here's the final result. I thought both owls came out super cute. The one on the right is painted with the two paints. I have to say the cadmium orange and cadmium red mix that I used for the sweater became a little muddy. So I wasn't very happy with that. It's probably because it has a lot of fillers. But other than that, the experience was great. It was easier to paint with the two paints than with the pan paint set. So I would highly recommend this set for beginners. They're a great deal in terms of price per ounce. They're definitely not the best paints out there, right? They're much better paints, but they do come at a price premium. So if you're in a budget, these are perfectly fine to begin with. You will be able to learn all the right techniques and be able to get great results with these uh, with a little time and patience. All right. I hope you really liked this video and this review and that it was useful. If you did, please consider giving this a thumbs up and subscribing for more videos like this. All right. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.